Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. David claimed in his uh, presentation that Ibn Taymiyyah accepted it. He never produced any statement by Ibn Taymiyyah. Listen to this now. This is what Ibn Taymiyyah said. The words that say these are the high Iqaraniq, it was not the Prophet who said them, but the devil threw these words in their ears. The ears of the disbelievers. Ibn Taymiyyah al fatawa 2, 282. So David, Ibn Taymiyyah did not accept this story as you claim he did. Okay. Now, I saved it for this time. I let David speak and now we know the reality of these reports. Why the Muslim scholars rejected them? David himself, in fact, exposed his uh, approach to this topic. He said he has 37 reports with him which means he has studied them, he knows them, and he knows what they contain. Then he gave you 10 sources of those 37 uh, reports, contradicting himself. 37 reports, multiple reports, then 10 sources of them. What's the problem here? You see, every single of those reports is, contradict is, is, is in contradiction itself. For example, the reports collectively, when you see them all together, that's what they come up to. Each version differs from other in essential and material respects, in major details, ladies and gentlemen. Occasion of the incident, Prophet was in some reports, Prophet at uh, Kaaba, he was praying at Kaaba with companions. Other reports, he was talking to unbelievers, and the Surah came. Then other report, Surah was already revealed, and some disbelievers were already listening to it. Others say that the disbelievers came to Prophet Muhammad and they said to compromise with us. And then we will sit with you and the outcomers, the newcomers, they will see us sitting with you and they will be impressed. Which one do you prefer? Then nature of alleged uttering uh, of satanic verses. The alleged nature. What did they say? What is the Satan saying? Now on the blogs and on the websites, when you go there, you find that David and his friends deliberately chose those reports which state that Satan put the word in Prophet's mouth. Are there any other reports in these particular reports? David said he's got 37 reports there. So he should know them. He must have studied them. Let's see what they say. say some reports state Satan threw these verses and Prophet thought Gabriel brought them. Some reports state Prophet uttered intentionally to soften Quraysh. Some reports say Prophet uttered a mistake. Some say Prophet uttered them intentionally with no interrogation signifying denial. Some say Prophet uttered them no mention of reason or influence. Some, him, some state Satan himself imitated Prophet's voice and uttered them and the disbelievers heard these words. Prophet never uttered them. Some state neither Prophet nor Satan uttered them by but a disbeliever from the crowd of disbelievers who, was, who were present there, he uttered them. These are the details you never find on their blogs and the websites. Why do you choose the reports where Prophet is alleged to have heard these verses from the Satan and said them? While there are other reports which are saying, in the same corpus, in the same literature, 37 reports, David said he knows them, where it stated the Prophet never uttered them, a disbeliever said it, or the Satan imitated the voice of Prophet and he said it. Why don't you put them on your blogs and on the websites and tell the people these two reports are also there. They are also there, but you never put them up. So there is a deliberate attempt to undermine the status of Prophet of Islam. There is picking and choosing. And this is not an obje objective approach to the whole topic. This is a subjective approach. So the effect or secret of uh, uh, the, the narration is all um, um, coming to us from different sources. When you study the, the, the contents, every single report, ladies and gentlemen, is contradicting the other in details. All 37 of them, all the reports, all 10 sources he gave. This is why the scholars of Islam reject the entire report system altogether. They said this is all lies because one report is not saying, first of all, David did not give us one statement by one Islamic scholar where he said that these reports are sahih. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reports about brushing our teeth, putting our shoes on, washing ourselves, 
and every single report we have statements by the scholar Sahih, 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 authentic, authentic, authentic. This report, nothing. David has nothing to produce. Instead, he used the criteria which I call MPE, multiple attachment. And then principle of embarrassment. And then early attachments. Early, David said early sources are the most authentic one. Gospel of Thomas. According to Marvin Bay in this book, Nagamali Scriptures, goes even early into the synoptic gospels. Gospel of Thomas, according to a scholar of Nagamali Scriptures, who is the highest authority of Nagamali Scriptures. Gospel of Thomas says James is the successor of Christ, not Peter. And Gospel of Thomas says that Jesus said that if you wanna, if you see a man who is born, if you wanna see God, then go to someone who is not born of a woman. Go to someone who is not born of a woman. Meaning, someone who is born of a woman cannot be God. That applies to Jesus as well. He was born of a woman. Gospel of Thomas telling you directly that Jesus is not God. He is born of a woman. Earliest source of Christians. Double standards. Objective approach rejected and subjective report and subjective approach adopted. Okay. Origin of the story. There are many mixed statements about this, ladies and gentlemen, that where the story originated, originates from. Many people are lying. David said 5, 10, 20, 30 to shock you. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There are reports in within Islamic literature, listen to me carefully now, within the Islamic literature, which state that Quran has 17,000 verses. The present Quran has got 6,000 verses. But this report is stating, multiply attested from many sources with a chain. More than 37 chains, ladies and gentlemen. How many chains do you think this report has? 10, 5, 20, 30, 50, 100, 500? Guess. For this particular report, within Islamic literature, where Quran is interpreted, Quran has 17,000 verses, Quran has 20,000 verses, Quran has been, Quran has been uh, tampered with by the Sahaba himself. 2,000 reports, ladies and gentlemen, within Islamic literature. Does David accept them? Does Dr. Watt accept them? Montgomery Watt, he quoted, uh, to have said that he accepted this verse. And he said, no, 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 scholars accept this. That's not true as well, ladies and gentlemen. John Burton, a well-respected scholar of the Quran, he rejected these reports as fabrication. John Burton, not a Muslim. He studied the history of Islam and he said, uh, these reports are fabricated. Montgomery Ward accepted the Quran which we have today is essentially Uthmanic recension. It came from Uthman, at least. We're happy with that. Uthman is a companion of Prophet. Do the Christians have that privilege? Synoptic Gospels, where do they come from? Early attestations, do we have them? 5,700 manuscripts, every single of them contradic contradictory in contents, different contents. Which one is true? Which one is true word of God? Apply the same criteria to yourselves. The science of Hadith, ladies and gentlemen, is an ext extensive topic in itself. David is trying to confuse you with the science of Hadith. It is trying to 37 reports. As I said, there are 2,000 reports. There are reports in Islamic literature. Uh, I'm sorry to say these words, but this because the topic is about the science of Hadith, you have to know this. There are reports in Islamic literature. There's a book called Bihar al 110 volumes of Hadith. In there, there are reports that Prophet Muhammad, before he used to sleep, he used to put his faith in the breast of Fatima, his daughter. Do you believe that? Does any non-Muslim scholar believe that? Is there any element of truth in that? No. Multiply attested. Change according to your criteria of embarrassment. Who is inventing these lies? Are Muslims inventing these lies? That Prophet used to put his face in the chest of Fatima? Are Muslims doing this to help the Prophet? Your own criteria is going against you. Earlier, just uh, I've already stated. Now, David's approach, ladies and gentlemen, to the whole issue is uh, flawed, in my opinion. And David, David said that the earliest sources of Islam say that. This is a misrepresentation of Islamic sources. All the sources 
are fourth or fifth in category, ladies and gentlemen, as I stated in my statement. And the earlier sources, look at this list. And the list goes on. There are earlier than all the sources David mentioned. There are 59 early sources I have documented and David does not know about them. If he knew, he would have said uh, that there are earlier sources of Islam than these uh, which are there. But David said these are early sources mentioned. Them. Earlier sources don't mention these reports. These are later interpretations, later fabrications. That's why a, 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 a line or the whole list of Islamic scholars rejected them. Even Ibn Taymiyyah, which he bought for himself, I quoted, rejected the report. So ladies and gentlemen, who's right and who's wrong? We have to see the approach, the objectivity, whether David and his party or his friends are objective in this whole issue or not. So David must answer these questions. I have several questions for him. Why he does not accept explanation given as to the story's origin? Because it's a fabrication, it's a later report. Um, two, why he fails to understand the difference between transmitters and evaluators and how some historians use this story to vindicate the Prophet receiving revelations from the God through Jibreel. Jibreel. If, Prophet, if, if David accepts the story to be authentic, then he also accepts that Jibreel came to Prophet. Gabriel came to Prophet with revelation. Do you accept that? You accept the satanic bit, but you reject the other one. Why? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So we have from Ibn Umar, 
that much of the Quran has been lost. And so uh, why shouldn't there have been originally 17,000 verses? Uh, he says, well, the Gospel of Thomas is, our, is the earliest Christian source. Yes, you could find two or three uh, people on the planet willing to say that, but no one said that. In fact, I was at the conference uh, about three years ago where it was proven conclusively that whoever wrote the Gospel of Thomas uh, drew on the Diatessaron written around 160. So it comes after 160. Uh, and it definitely shows Gnostic influence in the pages. There's no way the Gospel of Thomas came from the first century. That's the consensus of scholars. Yes, you can find a fringe view. I can find a scholar who says Muhammad never existed. Does that make that scholar right? No, you go with it. You go with the majority of what scholars say. Um, he says that earlier sources don't report the satanic uh, verses. He has earlier sources. I'm not sure what he means. If he means he has earlier biographies, which is what I was referring to, uh, show me uh, show me some biographies that are earlier than, than Ibn Isaac. I'd love to I'd love to read them. Uh, I know of them. I know things that you can quote that, that there were original sources that we don't have, we might have pieces of them. Uh, but, but besides that, I took these reports all the way back to the first century. I took these back to people who studied with Ibn Abbas and Caliph Umar and, uh, and Zayd Ibn Thaq. Who was he? He's the guy who compiled the Quran. These are people who are right there studying with the companions and they're the ones reporting the satanic verses. Are you saying they're liars? It sounds like that's what I'm saying. All these first century Muslims were a bunch of liars. Again, I would just ask, how can you trust anything? Go to the Hadith. Go to Sahih al-Bukhari. You'll find these same people in transmissions going into al-Bukhari. If they're a bunch of liars, how can you trust any of them? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you're stuck with that. If you want to reject the satanic verses, you have to say, these early Muslims were, were a bunch of liars. All right, you have to live with the consequences, though. Don't tell me you know anything about your prophet. Next, I argue that Muslims are misapplying the method of Islam criticism because the most important reports of the satanic verses are contained in the Sir Maghazi literature, and so it only makes sense to examine the narratives according to the standards of the Sir Maghazi literature. When we do this, we find that the reports are reliable. How did that respond? He just went right ahead with his method and ignored this. He's acting like... Uh, the method of the Hadith scholars was the only method. Look, I said this before. Even the Hadith scholars understood that they had a different methodology from the Sir Maghazi scholars. Now, just because later Muslims chose one over the other, that doesn't mean that the earliest Sir Maghazi transmitters were unreliable. Even the Hadith scholars said, yes, they are reliable when they, when they transmit this biographical material. So, apparently Adnan knows more than even the Hadith scholars that he appeals to. Finally, I showed that even when we uh, apply the methodology of the Hadith scholars, we still find that the reports are reliable. We have reliable Isnads going back to the Abbas, and Muslims have no good reasons for rejecting these. They come up with some excuses, but not good reasons. We also have multiple Sahih Mursal reports, and according to Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh al-Islam, when we have multiple Sahih Mursal reports of an event, we should accept the event as historical. Now, according to Adnan, uh, Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, rejected the reports of the Satanic verses, and he uh, believed that uh, Satan had just put them on the words uh, of Muhammad. I have a passage right here from Ibn Taymiyyah. We can uh, look at it later. We can all gather around it there. We can all read it together, where Ibn Taymiyyah uh, appealed to this, appealed to this event as evidence that Muhammad was a prophet. He said, if Muhammad were a prophet, he would have just stuck what he said and would have admitted that, he, that he'd fallen into error. But he admitted that he had fallen to prayer. This showed that he was a true prophet. So Ibn Taymiyyah admitted that, I mean, admitted that Muhammad said that he had fallen into error. So Ibn Taymiyyah's position was not that Muhammad was innocent in this matter. His position was that Muhammad recited these verses himself. Uh, he says that I deliberately choose statements that say Muhammad, that Muhammad recited the verses, and I never quote the, the reports saying that Satan uh, said it. And this is a deliberate distortion. No, it's not. It's a simple fact that all of the reports that go back to the first century, 100% of the reports that go back to the first century, say that Muhammad said them. It's only in the next 50 years after that first century that you start getting these variations that no Satan said them and he disguised his voice to sound like Muhammad. This was an obvious attempt by later Muslims to exonerate Muhammad. So if I'm going to if I'm going to examine this openly, who am I going to go with? Am I going to go with all the people from the first century whose position on this was unanimous? Or am I going to go with later Muslims who are obviously trying to rescue Muhammad? Muslims obviously want to go with later people who rescue Muhammad. Uh, I don't share that methodology. I go with the earliest scholars, just as historians do. 
Uh, so it's clear that my entire case for the authenticity of the satanic verses narratives is still standing. Uh, no matter how we examine the early Muslim sources, we have to accept the satanic verses as authentic. Now, Adnan has given uh, some arguments that I uh, didn't get to address earlier. For instance, he said that the Quran contradicts these events. Uh, since the Quran says Muhammad couldn't go into error, the prophets did not go into error, therefore Muhammad could never have delivered the satanic verses. Now, uh, Adnan certainly uh, is misinterpreting uh, Surah 17, 73 through 75. Well, he, I can see why he would interpret it that way, but the point is that's not how the early Muslims interpret it. When God says um, that he wouldn't let Muhammad go astray, how Ibn Taymiyyah interpreted it and how the early first century Muslims interpreted this was that God is not going to allow Muhammad to persist in error. So Muhammad might mess up, and God is going to come in there and keep him from persisting in that error. That was the position. It wasn't until the second century, when they came up and they modified, the Muslims modified the doctrine of God's protection of the prophets, that Muslims said, no, prophets can't, won't, can't go into error at all. But that's not the first century position. That's not the position of the early commentators. That's not the, early, the position of the early Muslim scholars. That doesn't come about until later. So what am I going to go with? Later conclusions that are based on theology, or the earlier people who aren't basing their, their positions on theology, they're basing it on what they know about Muhammad that was in the memory of the early Muslim community. I think the answer is, is very clear. Uh, now, as far as this contradicting the Quran, no, this fits in perfectly with the Quran. Uh, let me read to you from Surah 22. This came about as a result of the Satanic verses. Allah says, And we did not send before you any apostle or prophet, but when he desired, Satan made a suggestion respecting his desire. So you desire, and then Satan casts it on your desire. But Allah annuls that which Satan casts, then does Allah establish his communications, and Allah is knowing why. So Satan casts something. Now I'm sure Adnan would say, well, you know, that shows that God takes away and doesn't allow it to happen. Wrong, keep reading. It says, um, so that he may make what the Satan casts a trial for those in, heart, in whose hearts is a disease and those whose hearts are hard. And most surely the unjust are in great opposition. So God allows prophets to deliver messages from the devil to test people. You can't say this is something that God stops before it ever gets to the prophet or it will be a test. It has to get to the people if it's going to function as a test. So according to this passage, which, is, which came about, this was, this was uh, Muhammad's this was God's answer when Muhammad needed to be comforted. comforted. God said, don't worry about Muhammad. All prophets deliver revelations from the devil from time to time. Uh, maybe comforting to Muhammad, not comforting to me. Now just think about this in the last few seconds. I have more respect for the early Muslim historians and commentators than Muslims do. I have more respect for the people, the Muslims. I have more faith in their reliability to pass on knowledge than Muslims do. I have more respect for the methodology of Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh al-Islam, than a Salafi debater does. I am the one defending the ability of Muslims to tell us about their prophet. And who's telling us, no, don't trust them, don't trust Ibn Taymiyyah, don't trust any of them. Muslims are telling us this. Well, that's fine if you want to go that route, but it's the same thing we find when Muslims investigate Christianity. Ignore all the evidence. Reject it in any way possible. And then we turn to Islam, we go to the same, Christians use the same method, we go to the early sources, we see what they say, we find Muslims doing the same thing. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Listen to later things that we like. Now, if you're comfortable with that, that's on you. Uh, as for me, I'm going to stick with the same methodology and go with, the, go with what the earliest commentators say. And I do that with Christianity, I do it with Islam. And you see the conclusions that happen when we uh, follow this method. And you see why Muslims have to reject it because.